the most common projectile motion problem is one in which an object is launched from a certain height above the ground. That object would then travel until reaching some maximum height, at which point it would start to fall downward until hitting the ground below the point where it started from. And you would normally be given some information in this example. We are told that this object is launched from 150 meters above the ground at a speed of 17 meters per second. Our first step here, the first thing we need to do is define a reference direction. And I'm going to choose downward as my positive direction, which immediately tells me that that initial velocity, because it is upward, is actually negative 17 meters per second. So the first question that would often be asked here would be calculate the maximum height reached by this object above the ground. And in order to do this, we need to realize that the object, when it reaches its maximum height, its velocity will be zero. We know that as it travels upward, its acceleration is constant. We know the acceleration is a constant of 9.8 meters per second per second downward but the velocity is constantly decreasing until it reaches that maximum height. Once we understand that the velocity at the maximum height is zero, we can use our first equation of motion to solve for the amount of time that it takes, the final velocity being zero, the initial velocity being negative 17 plus gravitational constant multiplied by the time, and we find that the time taken to reach its maximum height is 1.5. 73 seconds. Another common question here would be what is the maximum height reached above the ground? And for that we can use our third equation of motion where we now say that we know that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times gravitational acceleration times the displacement. The final velocity here we know is once again going to be zero because it's the maximum height. The initial velocity is negative 17 plus two times our constant and what we are trying to find. And we find that our displacement here is negative 14.74 meters. That displacement being negative tells us that this object has moved upward, upward being our negative direction. The question would often specify the maximum height above the ground, which means that it would be the height from where it was launched added to the height that it reaches. So 150 meters plus 14.74 meters, 164.74 meters above the ground. The next question that is commonly asked is calculate the amount of time it takes to reach the ground. And we can do that by knowing that the displacement is only going to be 150 meters. Despite the object traveling upward, first we know displacement is distance from where it starts to where it ends, which is only 150 meters. And we substitute those values in, again, keeping in mind that the directions here are important. And we find that we have a quadratic equation that can be solved with a calculator to find that our time is either negative 4.76 seconds or 7.53 seconds, where obviously a negative time does not make sense here. So our time to hit the ground would be 7.53 seconds. That is the amount of time it took to go up, reach its maximum height and travel all the way down to hit the ground. And the final Common calculation or question would be asking what is the final velocity when it hits the ground? And we would calculate that in the following way. Final velocity is equal to initial velocity squared plus two times gravitational acceleration times the displacement. Final velocity is our unknown and that is equal to our initial velocity which is still in the opposite direction squared plus two times 9.8 times our displacement of 150. All of those are downward and therefore positive, which means that our final velocity is a positive value, meaning the velocity is downward of 56.82 meters per second downwards. There are a number of important things that we can take from this. The first is that the amount of time the object takes to reach its maximum height 
will always be equal to the amount of time the object takes to return to its starting point. So if we say it took 1.73 seconds to reach its maximum height, it would take another 1.73 seconds to reach its starting point, meaning a total of 3.46 seconds to reach the starting point. That is a given or a constant. You may assume that in a test or exam. And finally, if the object's initial velocity is 17 meters per second upward, we can safely assume that when the object returns to its starting point, its velocity at that point will be 17 meters per second downward.